everyone. This is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be talking about the drug haloperidol, also known as Haldol. Haloperidol belongs to the drug classification called typical antipsychotics. And before we talk about haloperidol specifically, we'll cover a bit of information about two of the general antipsychotic classes. Those are the typical and atypical antipsychotics. Typical antipsychotics, also known as first generation or conventional antipsychotics, are used in the treatment of psychosis and behavioral problems. They can be highly effective, but do have a high risk of causing side effects, especially extrapyramidal symptoms, which we'll talk about more later. Typical antipsychotics are used in the treatment of positive symptoms of schizophrenia, which are thoughts, feelings, or actions that are added on to a person's regular behaviors. Something like hallucinations is something that would be added on to a person's regular behavior and is an example of a positive symptom. Atypical antipsychotics, also known as second generation antipsychotics, are the newer and generally safer options that show fewer side effects. They can be used in the treatment of both positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Negative symptoms being things that are taken away from regular behaviors. Examples of negative symptoms include apathy and flat affect. The way that haloperidol works, the mechanism of action, is not clearly understood. The antipsychotic activity may be due to brainstem depression. Haloperidol does exhibit anti-dopaminergic, anticholinergic, and sedative properties. Symptoms of schizophrenia are thought to be caused by hyperactivity of dopamine receptor neurotransmission in the brain, but this theory does not provide a complete explanation for schizophrenia. Because haloperidol is a typical antipsychotic, it is used for the treatment of positive symptoms in schizophrenia, such as hallucinations, aggressive behaviors, and psychomotor agitation. Haloperidol is also used for the treatment of Tourette syndrome, acute psychosis, and other behavioral problems. Going back to the side effects of a typical antipsychotic like haloperidol, we mentioned the chance of causing extrapyramidal symptoms, or EPS. EPS are drug-induced movement disorders, including tardive dyskinesia, which is a slow onset of involuntary movements, like sticking out the tongue or smacking up the lips, Parkinsonisms, which are the symptoms found in Parkinson's disease, like tremors and rigidity, and other dystonias. Antipsychotics like haloperidol may also cause a life-threatening reaction called neuroleptic malignant syndrome, or NMS. NMS presents as high fever, confusion, tachycardia, and muscle rigidity, and can lead to further complications like rhabdomyolysis, kidney failure, and seizures. Another major side effect is a granulocytosis, which is a lowered white blood cell count, which leads to a high risk of infection due to a suppressed immune system. In terms of contraindications, avoid use in patients with Parkinson's disease. Symptoms of Parkinson's are caused by the loss of dopamine and haloperidol exhibits anti-dopaminergic properties. Avoid use in patients taking high quantities of CNS depressants or patients who are comatose. Haloperidol may cause QT prolongation, which can be seen on an ECG, so precaution should be used if a patient already has QT prolongation. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of haloperidol. Watch for the signs and symptoms of NMS and EPS. Ensure proper fall prevention is in place, especially for elderly patients. And as with all drugs, always be aware of potential interactions with haloperidol, some of which are lithium, levodopa, other CNS depressants like alcohol, and more. So there's a lot that can be learned about this drug, but these are some of the most important things to know. If you would like to try a free antipsychotic drug quiz, I placed a link in the video description for that. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.